Hey, today's video is on Inbox Zero. Inbox Zero is an app that helps you clean up your inbox and it's completely open source. And I am the creator of it. I launched it on Product Hunt today. It's doing really well. It's currently in first place with 530 upvotes. The sort of features it provides are newsletter management, AI automation, and email analytics. So usually if you're new here, this channel is called Learn From Open Source. I dive into the code behind a different open source project every week and teach you about the tech behind it. I'm not gonna go too deep into the tech this time. I'm gonna cover it in maybe a minute or two. In a few days, I might might do a full video on Inbox Zero and how it was built. I will give you quite a lot of tips on how to launch on Product Hunt, tips that can help an open source project or frankly any project. I'll give you tips in terms of like, how did I create this uh, cover artwork, for example, and how did I think about my copy and the video I created for the launch and so on. So before we get started, I'd love for you to subscribe. Let's take a quick look at the repo and to understand the tech stack of how it was built. Also, I'd love a star on Inbox Zero. Uh, the link is in description below. So the tech I used is Next.js, TypeScript, Tailwind. Um, for the UI, I used a few different libraries, but ShadCN is sort of at the core. I, used to, I also used Tremor React and a bit of Tailwind UI. For the database, I used uh, Postgres and Prisma. I also used Tinybird for analytics. That's basically serverless ClickHouse. And I used uh, Upstash for its QStash service and a bit of Redis. And it also uses Turbo Repo. And the external services I used as well are OpenAI. So there is an AI uh, aspect to this product to be an automated AI assistant. So OpenAI does that. I use Google OAuth um, and that's to request a Gmail API permissions and for sign in. I use Google PubSub. So that's to receive emails in real time to update them and act on them if needed. Um, so yeah, feel free to dive into the project. Um, this is sort of how it's set up very, very quickly. It's a turbo repo. So here you see some patch packages I set up and here you sort of see the apps. Process queue actually doesn't do anything right now. So the only app is actually the web package. This is just a Next.js project. So yeah, um, I've got a lot planned for this. Uh, I hope you like it. Dive into the code. Let me know what you think. And I'll I'll do a more complete video on the code in a few days. So here are a few tips to help you launch well on Product Hunt. I hope I stay in first place for the rest of the day. It's definitely been better than I expected it to be. Already 438 upvotes with a bunch of time left. Here you can see what my page looks like, the video, the screenshots and so on, the description, and here you can see my first make a comment. In terms of preparing for the launch, one thing I would say is create a list of friends on Twitter, WhatsApp, people you know that are part of the startup community that might already have a Product Hunt account and just get them ready ahead of time so you don't have to think about it too much on the day of the launch. My list was around 100 people long. I basically targeted people that already had Product Hunt accounts because votes from new accounts, like if your parents sign up, hasn't used Product Hunt before, then those votes don't mean as much. One tactic you could use is ask them to start using Product Hunt a few weeks in advance, upvoting random products, but it's quite a lot of effort uh, to build a lot of accounts that way. So what I'd really recommend is that you just like build your own community and network. And this is important just for anything you do anyway. There's always value to having a strong network. I would recommend posting in communities. So there's a lot of startup communities. Two that I'm a part of are TrendsVC. I do a weekly mastermind call in that group and Indie Worldwide is another that I've been active in over the last few years. I'll stick links in the descriptions below. Might be affiliate links, but the reason I'm posting it is just because I like those communities and maybe I'll see you around in them if you join them. I know there are tons of other online communities as well. And of course there are tons of offline communities you can network in. I'm not in this community specifically for Product Hunt launch, but they definitely help because all these founders are on Product Hunt because they've all put um, their own products on there as well. Other places to post, there's Reddit, Slack groups, Discord, Twitter, LinkedIn, Circle, and so on. There's so many uh, places you can post. Post commune in places that are specific to your niche. So for me, open source communities are very strong. And because my product is open source, this is a way I can get a lot of value. And the open source community has been really helpful in getting to number one so far. And I've seen a lot of other open source products hit number one. And I think it's for the same reason because like all the open source projects are backing each other up. But if you have a specific niche, whatever it is, be in those communities, share it with them. And that way you'll get the uh, votes and you'll also uh, get yourself in front of the people that you want to be selling to and becoming your customers at the end of the day. Aim to start strongly. The day starts at 12 a.m. Pacific time or San Francisco time. For me, where I am right now, that meant I was starting at 3 a.m. So I set an alarm. I woke up. It was up for two hours. It wasn't the best night, but it allowed me to get off to a strong start. And once you've got a strong start, you'll be featured near the top. And then the rest of the day will just continue to go well for you. Pace yourself as well so that sometimes what I've done in the past, I've had quite a decent start, but then it slowed down later on. Ideally, the product's good enough. People like it enough that it just grows organically. And that's mostly what has happened with this Inbox Zero launch. 
But if you are relying on votes from a lot of people, it's okay if you have a whole bunch of votes at the beginning and then like sort of staggered throughout the day. So it's not just one big jump and then it goes flat. But yeah, ultimately it mostly comes down to the product. In terms of setting targets, something I've been doing for myself recently is setting low expectations. And then anything I do above that is a bonus. So a friend asked me two weeks ago, what was I expecting for this launch? I was, I told him if I get a hundred upvotes or 200 upvotes, that will be a success. And honestly, 200 upvotes was, would have been a success. I'm already at 400, 430 or something. So I've gone beyond that and I'm more than happy that I'm in number one spot also is a surprise to me. I'm happy I'm there. I hope I stay there for the rest of the day. So if you're watching the video, take a look at the page and your support would be appreciated on Product Hunt as well. So yeah, in terms of hitting number one, it's nice for my ego. I guess it's good for my CV as well, but the real KPI for a business is how much revenue you generate and the active users you get from it. Now, of course, the more others you get, the more active users you get. So it's sort of part of a funnel that will trickle down, but don't get confused with vanity metrics and what actually matters to your business. So always just keep that in mind. But yeah, for me right now, like just being number one, that would be a win for me and any extra revenue I get from it, that would be awesome. I hope to continue improving the product continuously so I can keep bringing more value to users. Finding a hunter, that's something that used to be important in the past or somewhat important. Nowadays, Product Hunt says it just doesn't matter. But I did want to go with a hunter myself this time because two weeks ago, I launched a mini side project on Product Hunt. It didn't get featured. It got like 50 upvotes, which is quite decent for a product that wasn't featured. And I didn't put much effort into sharing it. But it wasn't great for me that it didn't get featured on the homepage. So I wanted to give myself the absolute best chance that this product I've been working on for a few months I wouldn't have been happy if it wasn't featured. So I made sure a friend hunted it and I, I was hoping that gave a bit more legitimacy to the product. And also when people see it, like it might add some more legitimacy in their eyes that sort of a big hunter had shared it. When to post. So there, there are two questions here. What days of the week and what time? So honestly, there are days which are stronger and you'll have more people viewing product hunt. So that's in terms of maximizing number of views. But also if you want to hit a rank number one, then you might go for a day with less competition. So I don't know which days, maybe Saturday or Sunday have less competition. I've actually gone and launched on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. So there's probably less competition on a day like this. It wasn't like fully intended to be this day. It just I wanted to launch two weeks ago. It got pushed off because I was moving about. But either way, there are pros and cons to any day that you launch. And being able to be first on a weekday has advantages to being third on a strong day. In terms of like where your product should be at, in terms of how much validation it has before posting. So... You know, you, you could post super early on and just get validation quickly. Or what you could do is wait till your product is somewhat working and you have some paying subscribers and people that use it and then go and post it live. This is what I did. I already had some paying customers and they were liking it and I had enough confidence in the product that I felt, okay, this is ready to go on Product Hunt. On the day of the launch, also I have a tweet that you put out. I wrote my Twitter copy like a few hours before the launch. And then everyone I shared the Product Hunt post with, I shared the Twitter, the tweet with them and also the product hunting so they could upvote both and that's where i'm directing all my traffic to i want to maximize number of views on twitter for myself and then also that tweet then points to product hunt don't know what the most effective strategy is here but yeah that's what i did ideally you set things up a few days in advance if you have a hunter don't leave it to the last minute for them you can always sort of once it's been hunted it doesn't have to be put live immediately you can schedule the launch and then they the hunter can add you as a sort of the maker of that product I actually, my friend put me up 15 minutes before the launch time, but ideally I would have set that up a few days in advance and I could edit all the details myself. The hunter doesn't have to enter every single detail for you. In terms of creating a video, I think it can be helpful to really give an overview of your product very quickly. So my video was around a minute long. My goal was to get to the point quickly. It's easy to ramble on these videos. What I recommended is trimming out the bits that don't matter. You can also re-record individual sections if you're not happy with it. So if the full video is like a minute and a half long, you could do a 20 seconds per feature or a segment that you want. And if you don't like that part, you can always re-record it. I am using Screen Studio to record this video and also for my product hunt video. I then later went and edited it in DaVinci Resolve. But Screen Studio and Loom, they both work just fine. I have a little bit of experience with these other tools because I've been running a YouTube channel recently, but they are definitely not a must. Most important is just to get it out there. Loom and Screen Studio both have editing tools that make it easy to cut. If you want to use another editing tool, CapCut is free and really easy to use and a more advanced one, which is also largely free is DaVinci Resolve and a lot of professionals use that. DaVinci Resolve is the one I use in conjunction with Screen Studio because then I can move in different segments and put them together and so on. But the main tip I would give you there is learn how to use the cut tool 
in order to create these videos. In terms of the maker's comment, so what I did was I took inspiration from others. You can see over here, this is my maker comment. I basically gave a short story, what my problem was, how I solved it for myself, and hopefully it will solve it for others. And then I listed some of the main features of the app. And then I gave a whole bunch of links as well. I copied another product that I saw. This has got 1300 upvotes. It was quite recent product of the week even. So that's really cool. Here you can see how he built his comment. His is even shorter than mine. He posts a few links that are relevant and you can see he's got like really to the point story that worked well but i looked at a lot of different examples for what i felt would work best for me and then worked off of that in terms of the images so here are my images this is what they look like i think they're pretty clean and to the point and it's likely that people aren't actually going to click in and go to the images so what you copy is quite important on these images in my opinion this is what the final outcome looks like it's actually pretty simple if you're not familiar with figma but you can see there's literally just three pieces to this there's a background there's some copy and there's the product image so really simple feel free to copy this style yourself so if you want to see how that was built i basically added some copy at first this is the cow sans font by cow.com a lot of open source projects are using it these days any project can use it here, I then added an image. I'll show you how I created a screenshot myself in a second. Something nice I added was basically a stroke around the outside for this image. Here you can see it's basically just a white border of 10 pixels. And then I gave it 18% alpha basically. So the transparency, and then you can also see rounded corners of size 10. And then the last thing I did was I gave this background. And now you can see the, like how the, the transparent border works. You can see here it's more blue, here it's more black. But anyway, that's a small detail. To create this image, basically what I did was a radial blur. I basically used blue and black, some of the colors of my own product. I think I used a sort of transparency as well here as well. And basically just gave it a radial blur and played around with it till I felt like it looked okay. And you can also play around the colors. This is with red and orange and you can see it still looks pretty good in my opinion. So then I just took more screenshots and you can see every time it's text and an image. And so that uh, works pretty well. If you want to know how to take a screenshot like this yourself, so this is a good tip, go into Chrome or Brave, whatever browser you use, Arc, you can do toggle, toggle device toolbar, and then you can set it up here. Now you might be used to this from like setting iPhone or responsive sizes, but you can also define your own sizes. And then afterwards you can use that for a high quality screenshot. So basically what I did was, I went and set it to 1620 by 960. And I think it's also set at 2X pixel quality so that it works well on retina displays. If you ever see product screenshots of your own that are like low uh, pixel quality, then this is the fix for that. In terms of how you actually go and create your own devices. So you can do here, edit, and then add custom device. You can give it a name. You can say how many pixels you want. Let's say you wanted a really big image, even bigger than your computer. You could do something like this. And here you can say device pixel ratio. I would recommend something like two for this so that it displays well on retina displays. If I just take a screenshot on my computer of this, it's not going to come out amazing. So that's like a good tip to know. And then the last bit is you can actually go and run a command from Brave itself or from Chrome. So if I type here screenshot, in Chrome, I will be able to take a screenshot of my device and this will come out in high quality. Last tip I'll mention, there's an extension called Zero Blur where basically you can cover up different parts of the page. So if there's any sensitive data on the page, you can use Zero Blur. So you don't have to go and mock the data or have some complicated setup to get rid of sensitive data from your screenshot. Or even for videos, honestly, I use that to cover up data I don't want shared on the videos. One last link I'll mention is that by Papermark, this was quite helpful. Take a look, I'll leave it in the description, but you can see how he sets things up. He also came first. It's also an open source project. He's come first at least twice. And yeah, he was also helpful in helping me launch. So here you can see even 843 votes. So that's really strong. And you can see actually a whole bunch of open source projects have actually done really well and have reached first spot with their launches. So hopefully you found those tips useful. I tried to be practical and give tips that I know I wouldn't have known a year ago or so. Obviously, if you Google it, you'll find 100,000 tips like on how to launch on product time and the best days and times and blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, just create a great product, a good story that people like and want to follow. And hopefully you do well. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the, the video. The link to my product hunt launch is below. It's today. So if you're watching this video live as it's come out, I would love your support to stay in first place. Also take a look at the GitHub repo. And if you're new to this channel, it's called Learn From Open Source. Every week or two weeks, I try and do a video about a different open source project and the code behind it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed.